Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, module on introduction to unsupervised learning. Right. Uh, so, in uh, supervised learning, uh, we looked at uh, how you will handle uh, training data that had labels on it. So, this, this particular place, uh, this is a classification uh, data set, uh, where red uh, denotes one class and blue denotes the other class. Right. And in, uh, in uh, unsupervised learning, right, so you basically have a lot of data that is given to you, uh, but they do not have any labels attached to them. Right. So, we look at first at the problem of clustering where uh, your goal is to find groups of uh, coherent or cohesive data points in this input space. right? So, here is an example of possible clusters. So, those set of data points could form a cluster right? and again now those set of data points could form a cluster and again those and those. So, there are like four, four clusters that we have identified uh, in this uh, in this setup. So, one thing to note here is that um, um, even in uh, something like clustering, so I need to have some form of a bias, right? So in this case, uh, the bias that I'm having is in the shape of the cluster. So I'm assuming that the clusters are all ellipsoids, right? Or uh, and therefore, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been drawing uh, a specific shape uh, curves for representing the clusters. And, uh, and also note that uh, not all data points need to fall into clusters. And uh, there are a couple of points there that do not fall into any of the clusters. Uh, this is primarily a, a artifact of me assuming that they are uh, ellipsoids, uh, but still uh, there are so the points in the center uh, is actually uh, far away from all the other points in the uh, in the data set uh, uh, to be considered as uh, what are known as outliers. Uh, so, when you do clustering, so there are two things. So, one is you are interested in finding uh, cohesive groups of points. And uh, second is you are also interested in finding data points that do not uh, conform to uh, the patterns in the inputs and these are known as outliers. Right? And uh, so, there are many, many different ways of uh, which uh, you can accomplish clustering and we will look at a few uh, in the course. And uh, the applications are numerous. Right? So, here are a few uh, representative ones. Uh, so, one thing is to look at uh, customer data. Right? and uh, try to discover uh, classes of customers you know there are so uh, earlier we looked at in the supervised learning case we looked at whether a customer will buy a computer or will not buy a computer as opposed to that we could just take all the customer data that you have and uh, try to just group them into different kinds of customers who come to your shop and then you could do some kind of targeted promotions at different classes of customers right and uh, this need not necessarily come with labels you know i'm not going to tell you that Okay, this customer is class 1, that customer is class 2, you are just going to find out which of the customers are more similar with each other. Right? And as the second application which I have illustrated here uh, is that I could do clustering on image pixels, so that you could discover uh, different regions in the image and then you could do some segmentation based on that uh, different region. So, for example, here you have a picture of uh, um, a picture of a beach scene and then you are able to figure out uh, the clouds and the sand and the sea and the tree from the image. So, that allows you to uh, make more uh, sense out of the image. right? Or you could do clustering on word usages right? and you could discover synonyms and uh, you could also do clustering on um, documents right? and uh, depending on which kind of uh, documents are similar to each other. Right? If I give you a collection of uh, uh, say 100,000 documents, I might be able to figure out what are the different topics that are discussed in this collection of documents. There are many, many ways in which you can uh, use, uh, use uh, clustering, rule mining. And uh, so, I should give you a, a side about uh, the usage of the word mining here. Um, so, many of you might have heard of the term data mining and uh, uh, more, more often than not uh, the uh, purported data mining tasks are essentially machine learning problems. right? So, it could be classification, regression and so on and so forth. And uh, the first uh, problem that was uh, essentially introduced as a mining problem and not as a learning problem was the one of mining frequent patterns and associations. And that is one of the reasons I call this uh, as association rule mining as opposed to association rule learning, uh, just to keep the historic uh, connection intact. right? So, in uh, association rule mining, we are interested in finding uh, frequent patterns that occur in the input data and then uh, we are looking at conditional dependencies among these patterns. Right? And uh, so, for example, if A and B occur together often, 
right then I could say something like if A happens then B will happen. Let us suppose that uh, uh, so uh, you have uh, customers that are coming to your uh, shop and uh, whenever customer A visits your shop customer B also tags along with him right. So the next time you find customer A somewhere in the shop so you can know that customer B is already there in the shop along with A or with very high confidence you could say that B is also in the shop uh, at some at, at somewhere else maybe not with A but somewhere else in the shop right. So these are the kinds of uh, rules that we are looking at association rules which are conditional dependencies if A has come then B is also there right. And uh, so the association rule mining uh, process usually goes in two stages. So the first thing is we find all frequent patterns. So A, A happens often. So A is a customer that comes to my sh store often, right? And then I find that A and B are pairs of customers that come to my store often. So if I once I have that, right? A comes to my store often and A and B comes to my store often, then I can derive associations from these kind, these uh, frequent patterns, right? And uh, so you could do this in a variety of different settings. You could find sequences in time series data, right? And uh, where uh, you could look at uh, triggers for certain events, or you could look at uh, uh, fault analysis, right? Uh, by looking at uh, a sequence of events that happened, and you can figure out which event uh, occurs more often with the fault, right? Or you could look at transactions data, uh, which is uh, the most uh, popular example given here is uh, what is called market basket data. So you go to a shop and you buy a bunch of things together and you put them in your basket. So what is there in your uh, basket, right? So this forms the transaction. So you buy say eggs, milk and bread and so all of this go together in your basket. Right? And then you can find out what are the frequently occurring uh, uh, patterns in this uh, purchase data and then you can make uh, rules out of those. Or you could look at finding patterns in graphs. Uh, that is typically used in social network analysis. So which kind of interactions among uh, entities uh, happen often, right? So that is, a, um, uh, that is another question that is what uh, looking at, right? Uh, so the most popular uh, uh, thing here is uh, mining transactions. So the most popular application here is mining transactions. And as I mentioned earlier, transaction is a collection of items that are bought together, right? And uh, so here is a little bit of terminology. And a, a set or a subset of items uh, is often called an item set in the association rule mining community. And uh, so the first step that you have to do is find frequent item sets, right? And uh, you can conclude that item set A, if it is frequent, implies item set B, if both A and A union B are frequent item sets, right? So A and B are subsets, so A union B is another subset. So if both A and A union B are frequent item sets, then you can say that item set A implies item set B, right? And like I mentioned earlier, so there are many applications here. So you could think of predicting co-occurrence of uh, uh, events and market basket analysis and time series analysis, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you could think of trigger events or uh, faults, uh, causes of faults, and so on and so forth, right? So this brings us to the end of. Uh, this module introducing unsupervised learning.